Tamarin is a 3D platformer inspired by the classics. It includes Mario's moveset, Jet Force Gemini shooting, and other rare classic mechanics and collectibles. The game was developed by Chameleon Games, a small team of ex-rare devs who wanted to make a spiritual successor to Jet Force Gemini. The game is a great throwback to the N64 era, with the caveat of some questionable design decisions. The story is this. Cute tamarin monkeys live in a little village happily when suddenly giant bugs show up and torch it to the ground. The tamarin prince heads out to smoke the shit out of some bugs with an Uzi. The juxtaposition between these two is strange, but hilarious. I want to point out some things early that may turn people away from the game immediately. There is an extreme lack of options to tweak, and the game highly recommends use of a controller. I used one. Just bear it in mind. The gameplay in Tamarin consists of two dynamics, which areas rotate between. The first are classic platforming worlds where exploration and collectibles can be found, as well as enemies that can be killed with a roll, jump attack, or by bonking them on the head. These areas can be freely explored, finding collectibles like fireflies, fruit, bug bits, birds, and permanent health upgrades. These areas are much larger than the classics, and loop through one another, and also contain some backtracking elements that open up shortcuts from other zones in the world. The other areas are a bit more straightforward, and the levels put platforming on the back burner by taking some abilities away and giving the Tamarin guns. The cute little Tamarin is now a murder machine. These levels are smaller and focus more on fighting bugs and making your way from start to finish. There are some areas that cannot be opened from the beginning and need to be backtracked through to unlock them. For this game, I'll start with sound. David Wise brings his daddy bangers to the table for this game, and if you enjoy his past soundtracks, then this game is worth it for the songs alone. It has his Donkey Kong Country style with more floaty, whimsical sounds in quiet areas and more electronic sounds in the gun murder areas. Seriously, you gotta listen to David Wise soundtracks, man. For real though, did you just hear that? The main character's sound effects are adorable and fitting. His little feet padding on the ground, his little squeak when he jumps, and his abilities are super cute. It's all just really quiet. Gun sounds sound like you are firing weapons in Call of Duty, which is hilarious contrasted with the monkey boy shooting them. I'm not a huge sound guy. If something is bad, I will definitely notice, as mentioned in my Max Payne video, but the music is significantly louder than Tamarin sounds in this game, often drowning him out. With a worse soundtrack, this might have been an issue, but it didn't bother me. The ants make an almost pig squeal sounding noise when they take damage and squish when they die, which somehow fits how they look. Tamarin controls well and he can run, roll, jump, backflip, air dive, climb, and zip to arrows. Most of these feel as though they were taken from Mario, or the dive may be a hat in time. The camera can get stuck on things, and it doesn't allow you to look upwards, which they remedy like an N64 game by allowing Tamarin to look around in first person. It is super weird. Of all the things to bring back from the classics, this is one of the elements they chose Anyway, the camera isn't bad enough to get you killed, 
it is only a minor annoyance and very infrequently getting stuck. The majority of platforming feels great and brought me right back to being a kid, exploring, finding collectibles, killing enemies, and unlocking new items to use, like a bounce pad and the invincibility flowers. There is a Bottles the Mole style hedgehog who gives out new weapons and unlocks usable items in exchange for fruit and other collectibles found in levels. Enemies in these platforming areas are killed in the same fashion Mario or Banjo would, with the exception of bugs climbing on walls which serve as obstacles to avoid, lest you fall all the way back to the ground. And what did I mean by leaping to arrows? My main complaint for these mechanics are these leaps, where you lock onto a context-sensitive portion of the environment and automatically leap to an arrow. There are moments where I had a hard time finding where the contextual area was, or that there even was one. Sometimes you can't even see the arrow, and sometimes there are so many paths that it is tough to find the right way to go. Also, why? Wouldn't it have been better to have the player control these and have a vine or a cannon or something to get across? I don't know, a hover like Dixie Kong or a hat to throw like Mario? Something's better than this. Then there are the Firefly collectibles in these areas which serve to guide and unlock doors, which have to be grabbed. Some are just freaking supernaturally difficult to snatch, and it makes absolutely no sense mechanically whatsoever. The specific bugs that are hard to grab are few and far between, but seriously, what the hell? Look at this, I'm performing the mechanic necessary to catch the Firefly, using different strategies, going slow and fast, nothing works, it just seems random. The other half of the game, the shooting sections, give the player adorable monkey versions of real life weapons that aim like you are still playing with an N64C button. The camera is so insistent on being centered that it is tough to stay on target sometimes, and locking on only works when there is a space invaders section or when enemies are above you. Enemies for the most part are large enough that missing is pretty difficult, but damn do they make it tough for you. They could have made modern, third-person shooting mechanics, and this would have been a way better game. The camera feels as though you are fighting against it every step of the way. The shooting feels okay mechanically, and blasting bugs is satisfying, so I guess there's that. Level design is overall pretty solid, and the first areas of the game are an absolute treat until Aegea Mountain shows up. The majority of areas are in outdoor, grassy, and forested like you're in a Disney movie, with gunfights particularly in the latter half in industrial buildings with metallic structures and explosive barrels. There are enemies to fight, secrets to find, shortcuts to unlock, and challenges to overcome. But Aegea Mountain, seriously, this area is a travesty of traversal and the silver coin challenges are literally four minutes of navigation while being timed. I want to talk about this because I hated it so much. Red coin challenges in Mario were borrowed in this game, but instead of finding eight coins and winning a prize, you continuously spawn several dozen of them. A camera shot shows a preview of where the coins are, but where in the holy tits is that? Unless you explore the area thoroughly before beginning the challenge, you have no idea where these shots are. This mountain has winding paths and tons of contextual jumps that are sometimes so hard to see or find that I was confused just getting to the top. The combat levels can also be a bit confusing at times. When the camera shows a door that unlocks and there are 10 identical doors, how is that supposed to help me? These are more forgivable as they are much smaller and closer to linear than the outdoor levels, but still. Visually, the tamarins are floofy, adorable little monkeys and are animated well. The bugs seem like a completely different visual style, but that may be so they stand out well and the player knows who to shoot. The art style for everything else is fine, and sometimes looks extremely low res to the point where it's kind of fuzzy. I turned settings all the way up on PC and there are still these issues. The world itself at times is like a fairy tale, and other times flat and lifeless. Eja Mountain. Overall, I don't think that the game looks bad, and again, does nothing to bring the game down. There are three weapons in the game, and two sub-weapons, including grenades and shurikens, which both serve functions outside of combat. Weapons are often used to open doors with switches, 
Grenades can open up new pathways, and shurikens can free caged birds. I like that there aren't any additional unnecessary collectibles or keys to open things, and that your arsenal can do more than just murder bugs. Finally, a small note about the final boss. It is either the easiest boss ever created, or bugged when I fought it, because it didn't even fight back. But I don't want to spoil anything else, so I'll keep it at that. Overall, Tamarin is a middle of the road adventure. As a huge 3D platformer and Jet Force fan, this game scratched an itch for me that brought me back to the classics in the 90s, with fun platforming, an adorable main character, collectibles and exploration in the world, an incredible soundtrack, and bug blasting. There are obvious problems in the game, like the camera, the aiming, and the contextual jumps. If you are a fan of the classics, you will probably enjoy this game, and find it an above average experience. If you have never played 3D platformers, you should definitely play something else first. And just because there is a monkey with a gun, doesn't mean that it's a great example of the genre. This game has some truly head-scratching design choices, but remained a fun game for me until the end. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please help me out and like it and subscribe and check out my Twitch channel where I'm playing all kinds of games and I discuss them kind of like I did in this video. And I do some stupid stuff like this. Yo, you're gonna hit me with these jams? Yeah! <laughs> Yo! Yo, they're bringing on the saxophone too?! Dude!